Mm. Hey, Fooge. Yes, sir. We have an email, dude. Cool. From who? Yeah, I can't tell if this is spam or not. Be careful, GK. If this is real, this is saying Miss Holly Ransom. She wants us to do behind the scenes coverage of her interviewing. Wait, what? Mr. Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. How do you even know that tagline? I love his movies, bro. <sighs> all right. Yeah, so that really did happen uh, recently. Uh, first and foremost, thank you to the Holly Ransom team for having me on board. It was an amazing experience to work with Holly. She is an absolute professional. Her delivery, her leadership skills, her question uh, that she you know finds within that is catered per person that she's interviewing. And uh, she's excellent at leadership development. And, uh, you know, look her up, hollyransom.com. Uh, I believe she's based out of Australia. She's ready to be a part of your next seminar with your large business team. So, um, you know, that being said, I'd be lying if I told you uh, I wasn't nervous going into this job. And I've always seen, like, famous people as far as, hey, look, they're People like you and I, they're just more famous than you and I. And that's true. Um, the part that always goes through my brain is when I get the itinerary, okay, when I see the shot list, as far as what time frame do I have? And, you know, to get the image, where is it? How is the room lit? Like, you don't know these things until you get there. So when I got there in the early, early morning, it was before 8 a.m. Uh, to, get, to get started, when I got there, the behind the stage area where the green room was and, you know, where I met Holly for the first time um, was extremely low lit, like very, very low lit. And I always have both my cameras and one camera always has my Godox V1 flash on it. Um, I love that dome on the front. It, it does a great job. So walked out to the main stage area. And as usual, it was lit beautifully. Audio was amazing. Uh, the seating, this room was so big, it was enough seats for 10,000 people. And they were still standing on the ends. Today, I have the extreme privilege of photographing Miss Holly Ransom. She's based out of Australia. And today, she is interviewing Mr. Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, no stress. <laughs> so let me show you what, what we're looking at here. That's what 10,000 seats look like. She's coming out on the stage and I get free reign to get my shots. That's impressive. Um, so I want to really stress the importance of being prepared for your job, whatever that is. You know, if you're a wedding photographer and you've never been to a certain venue, go check it out during the week. You know, or look it up online and look at some images of what you're getting into. Um, what's in your bag is so important. And this is a big reason why we get, you know, lenses that are 1.4, 1.2s. Um, doesn't mean we're always working at a 1.2, but just being able to have the ability. Because from 2.8 to 1.2, that's quite a few stops of light that you can allow. So the darker your scenario, the more leniency you'll need, which is why we get those kinds of lenses. Um, and I'll be honest, I, I don't like shooting at 1.2 because you're basically deciding on who's gonna be in focus, or what's gonna be in focus, you know? It's a great way to isolate who your subject is though, um, but I don't like shooting at 1.2 because it has to be spot on, you know? So the image uh, you see behind me here, I'll throw it on screen. This image was great because I'm facing them. So both of their faces are on the same plane, okay? So I could get away with a 1.8, 2.0 shot focusing on Holly and Matthew is also in focus. This other image here, when I'm shooting across Holly, looking at Matthew, looking at her, I knew off the bat she was gonna be out of focus. 
but I was more concerned on getting the image because her behind the scenes coverage that she really wanted was just um, a way of capturing everything that told a story as far as what does she do to get ready for these kind of interviews. So I have her in the green room, you know, on her iPad, taking notes. She, she's doing her research last minute, just, you know, making sure she had all of her questions ready to go. And it's so important to step away from the person and you're a voyeur, you know, you're five feet back or further and you're paying attention to what's happening and you're capturing the moment as it's happening. It's, it was extremely rare that, that I said, hey, look at me and smile. Um, very rare. Even when her and Matthew met for the first time in the green room, I was hired to be Holly's shadow, basically, right? So I walked in the room, too, with them, and I'm against the wall as they're talking, and they were nice enough to stay focused on each other and not paying attention to me. So they stayed engaged, and that allowed me to quickly get a couple of shots. I'm looking in my camera to see the image in the viewfinder because it's, I can tell if something's way sharp compared to looking at the back of that screen. The back of that screen, it's a small screen, right? And the amount of dots per inch you have uh, makes the image look great, but it's a, it's a small screen that you're looking at. Now, when you go into viewfinder and you're looking at it like you would on the computer, you can definitely see when something's out of focus or not. So you immediately consider the lighting scenario in that room, how are you going to expose for this shot. You, you do all the, the things in your head, you know, you're like, oh, I don't want to raise my ISO too much because then it's going to be a little grainy, a little noisy, er, than I would like, you know, I don't want to go to 1.2. Do I have to? My shutter, how slow of a shutter do I need to do to capture the image? All these things go through your head like this. So look, it does not matter which brand camera gear you're using, okay? You just need to be comfortable on knowing what your gear is going to get you in what conditions. So I dig my Fuji gear. I have links below to uh, my equipment that I did use. I use all the time, honestly. And uh, if you have any questions as far as low light photography or what should you do under what kind of stressful conditions, leave that in the comments because if you don't ask, you don't, you don't know. But most importantly, if you ask a question, I guarantee you there's more people out there that are afraid to ask the questions but have the same one in their brain that you do. So if you ask the question, I guarantee you other people will thank you for it. You know, So I'm so blessed in my career. This is my 30th year in business. And what I'm getting back is exactly what I've been putting out. I'm, I'm meeting the same kind of people like myself that are like-minded at every level of what this human experience is. So I cannot be more thankful. So look, remember, look in the viewfinder so you can see that image nice and big to check your sharpness. Do not rely on the screen on the back. Even when you click the button to blow it up a little bit, sometimes, man, that screen just looks so good. And depending on the distance that you're looking at it, you just can't tell if it's if it's sharp or not sharp, you know? So I hope I helped somebody today with the stress of low light photography. If I did, please give this a thumbs up. Um, I appreciate it. The algorithm will appreciate uh, seeing some interaction from all of my lovely people watching this video. Thanks for being here. And most importantly, stay focused on your dreams, man. I am literally living some aspects of my dreams in the beginning when I picked up a camera and said, man, wouldn't it be cool if, well, those days are now. So yeah, man, one inch forward every day is going to bring you to where I am today. And I'm still moving one inch forward every day. Trust me on that, right? All right, you guys, Fujinai says, uh, peace. See ya. All right.